Good morning, and welcome to the sanctuary of Leroy United Methodist Church. We're glad that you are joining us for worship this morning. A few announcements that I'd like to share with you today. As we prepare for Holy Week, we will gather in this space on Facebook Live again next Sunday morning at 9.30 for Palm Sunday worship. And then on Good Friday in the evening at 7.30, we will have a tenebrae service, a service of darkness and light. And then on Easter Sunday morning, back here in this space, decorated and ready to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday morning. We will also have a very brief uh, sunrise service with me at the gazebo in our village via Facebook Live that Sunday morning at 7 o'clock. So we hope that you will join us. If you become aware of any needs within our community, please be sure to let us know in the church office, leaving a message on the church machine or calling my cell phone or emailing us. Um, we want to be sure that we are remaining connected with one another and the people of our, our community during this time when we cannot physically be together. So again, we're glad that you have joined us here this morning. Over the last few weeks, as we have confronted the realities of this COVID-19 pandemic, and we've made some changes to the very way that we live our lives, I myself, and I'm sure maybe you have too, have felt a range of emotions. I have felt some fear and anxiety for the unknowns. How many people are going to get sick or perhaps even die from this? How long will we have to practice our physical distancing and be on a stay-at-home order in order to keep people safe? When will we be able to worship together again in the same room. In the midst of this, I've also felt a sense of pride, a pride for, for the friends and strangers alike who, who risk their lives on a daily basis to provide care or to stock shelves so that we have food. Proud of the way communities have come together to make sure that others have basic necessities. And I've been really encouraged by the creativity and the ingenuity that we see every day as people have found new ways to love and to support and to serve their neighbors. And with that, too, I have I felt a sense of sadness for those who have become ill, not necessarily even with this particular virus, but anyone who's become ill and cannot have their loved ones at their side, or for those who have a loved one who is ill and they feel powerless to help, for those who are isolated in nursing centers and can't have visitors, or for those who are isolated at home, particularly those for whom home is not necessarily a safe place. If I'm honest, <laughs> My emotions have been all over the place. And as I have reflected and, and prayed about these emotions throughout the week, I realized that I'm experiencing grief. Grief. Grief over the fact that the world has changed. Grief over the loss of normalcy. Grief over the loss of connection. All of this is hitting all of us hard, and we are grieving collectively. Harvard Business Review published an article this week titled, That Discomfort You Are Feeling Is Grief. And the article suggested that if we can name our emotions, if we can name the grief, if we can claim it, then we can manage it. The prescribed lectionary text for this week, this fifth Sunday in the season of Lent, speaks about 
grief. And I never cease to be amazed at how the assigned scriptures of the day, scriptures that were selected many years ago when the revised common lectionary was developed, how they can speak to our current context. Today's lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 1 through 45, the death of Lazarus. Now, the text, the text is long, but it's important for us to hear the whole story. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God might be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now going to try to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, 
he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. The gospel lesson is revealing. It's a story about real people who grieve and cry and become angry because someone they love has died. When Martha and Mary sent for Jesus to help their sick brother, Jesus didn't rush to Bethany to sit at his bedside. In fact, Jesus didn't show up at all while Lazarus was dying. When Jesus finally arrived, Lazarus' body had already been buried. And the family was well into the customary time of mourning that was prescribed by Hebrew law. Why did Jesus wait? Why did he allow his friend's emotions to be tried to the breaking point? The Gospel of John the only place that we find this story in Scripture doesn't really give us a clear answer. But what the text does explicitly tell us is that the first sister that Jesus met when he finally approached the outskirts of Bethany was Martha. Martha ran out and she greeted Jesus with all of the grief and all of the anger and all of the love of a close friend in crisis. She also courageously added a statement of deep faith. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him, she says. And when Jesus told Martha that Lazarus would rise again, Martha responded with even more statements of faith. And Martha ran back to get her sister Mary, who had stayed home. Now Mary, Mary is the one who is identified early in the chapter as the same person who would later anoint Jesus' feet. Her relationship with Jesus was personal. They were like family. And after Lazarus' death, we know that Mary stayed home. She didn't go out to meet Jesus until Martha came back to get her. And when Mary did finally greet Jesus, she brought with her her whole own mixture of grief and pain and anger. Both Martha and Mary cry out to Jesus as they embraced him. Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. Even the crowd wondered, couldn't he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And 
And Jesus truly felt. He truly felt their anger and their pain. He loved them. And so it was naturally human for him to weep with them and to weep for them. As the procession of family and friends walked to the grave where Lazarus was buried, they saw Jesus, the Messiah, weeping, weeping with them. Now, it's important to note here that although Jesus raised Lazarus' body back to life, Lazarus and Mary and Martha and everyone else in the story did eventually die and fade off into, into history. And although we all die as we must, we live in hope. We live in hope because Jesus gives us the courage through his own death and through his resurrection to die and then rise again also. Scripture proclaims that whether we live or we die, we are in the presence of God. And nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This was true for those who were gathered there at Lazarus' tomb. And it's true for us today when, when we grieve all of the losses that we are experiencing right now. Just as Jesus wept with Martha and Mary, Jesus weeps with us too. We hear Jesus say again, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And we try, we try to believe in the midst of our confusion and our anxiety and our grief. If we're honest, though, we, we, we might struggle a bit to believe the good news when we're hurting, when we're not in our best selves. Sometimes we're able to mix our feelings of grief with statements of faith, like Martha did. Sometimes, though, we can only express the pain, like Mary did. But either way, this story of Martha and Mary reminds us that we do not need to hide our grief our emotions, our anger, whatever we're feeling. We don't need to hide it from God. We can be honest with God, even when the feeling isn't pretty. Jesus feels our pain and weeps with us. Jesus allows us to be honest in our relationship with him. In fact, he wants us to be honest in our relationship with him because it's only in our honesty, in the naming, in the claiming of our pain that we can get through it, that we can be healed, that we can find redemption. Grief is an inevitable part of our life here on this earth. But the good news is that Jesus is with us, even weeping with us. While we live here, <laughs> and we'll be on the other side for us when we die. That, that is our hope. And that is our side. As we come to our time of joys and concerns this morning, I invite those who are watching, if you feel comfortable, to put your joys and concerns in the comments or send us an email or call us and let us know how you would like us to be praying for you this week. Some joys and concerns that I have uh, permission to share with all of you publicly. Uh, last week we prayed for the Leatherman family and Teresa Leatherman's mother, Mert Austin. And on Thursday evening,
merged with onto her eternal glory. And so we ask that you continue to hold the Leatherman family in your prayers at this time. Also, Gail Gunner's sister, Susan Howard, uh, had surgery on Friday, so please continue to hold her in your prayers. And um, Rick Hawk's mom, Eve Hawk, um, had an emergency appendectomy this week. She is now home, uh, but prayers would be appreciated for her as she recovers and uh, for her family as they tend to her needs even from a distance. And lastly, one other uh, concern that we have from our community of faith is that Chris Hen is in the hospital this morning, um, and she will be having emergency gallbladder surgery at 11 o'clock. Um, so please hold Chris in your care and in your prayers as well. One joy that I do have from this week is that we received a shout out on Facebook from Rebecca Rack who is the director at the Lodi Family Center. And it's obvious that she's quite aware of our mission here at the church. And this is, this is what she said I, I want to share with all of you. I want to give a huge shout out to Leroy United Methodist Church. You guys are amazing. Your love for God shined all week through your actions and speak, speech. <laughs> Thank you for not hiding your light under a bushel and instead using it to lead the way. Your love for people shined as you offered words of encouragement to volunteers and clients alike. Your desire to serve the world shined from the moment you picked up that U-Haul, filled it, unloaded it, and then came back another day to help create food boxes and deliver them. It has been a privilege to serve with you all. Thank you, Pastor Dylan, for being a positive and encouraging leader, and thank you to Leroy United Methodist Church for all you and your congregation have done to make sure no family or senior goes hungry. So thank you all for being the church, for loving God, for loving people, for serving the world. Uh, this is a time for us to truly do that. And so thank you all uh, for, for being a part of that. As we come to our time of prayer, um, I invite you, as you are home, to take just a moment to center yourself, recognize that God's presence is with you wherever you are, settle into that presence, and then we will have the pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. And I invite you to join in on the Lord's Prayer as we all pray that in community together. Let us pray. O oh God of light and of love, today we see the sun shining, we see flowers beginning to bud, daffodils emerging. We are reminded, O oh God, of your creation. We are reminded that you have made all things and you are over all things and in all things. Oh God, it is hard for us to fathom that the creator of the universe loves us deeply. And yet we know that you do indeed love us deeply and are concerned and are with us in the midst of all that we go through in life. You share in our joy and you share in our sorrow. You weep with us as we grieve. Oh God, today we are mindful of all of the many who are sick. Those who are sick with this virus. Those who have had other health concerns this week. Those even undergoing surgery today, oh God, we thank you for medical teams who risk their lives day in and day out to care for people. Oh God, we are very blessed to have so many who care for others, to be 
be sure that their needs are met. Guides the doctors and nurses in all hospitals and places today, but particularly those who will be caring for Chris this morning. Give them wisdom and discernment. Help to Chris to heal quickly so that she can be back serving you. We thank you for the ways that we see you at work in our community. How people have come together, working together, coming up with new ideas and ways to help one another and care for one another. We ask for your presence to be with those who are lonely and isolated right now, oh God. There's so much in our world, but we know that you are there. And you are over all of it. And we place our hope and our trust in you. Because we know that you are indeed the resurrection and the life. That you bring beauty out of ashes. That you bring life from death. We claim that hope and we claim that promise. That we find in your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we come to our time of offering this morning, I would like to say thank you to all of those who have continued to support the ministries of our church. Even when we cannot physically come and put our tithes and offerings in the offering plate. Uh, we appreciate those who have mailed in their pledges and tithes and offerings, as well as those who have given online to continue to support the ministries of our church. Your offering helps us to continue to provide resources, staffing resources, and, and basic necessities to our church and our community members during this uh, time of physical separation. Uh, so far, we have provided space for Cloverleaf to distribute food. We have our streaming platforms for online worship, as well as daily stories um, and daily meditations by me. Uh, we have electronic options for, for groups meeting together, like youth group and Bible study. And we have our daily communications and, and staffing uh, for our church members and community. And so we, we appreciate your continued support of that. The church, the church isn't closed. We have just um, transitioned, if you will, our focus so that we can alleviate as best we can the burden that many are feeling in this time. So if you have the means, we ask that you consider giving even a small donation so that we can continue to love our neighbors during this time. Will you pray with me over today's offering? and those that we have received throughout the week. Oh God, we thank you for all that you give to us. We know that you are the source of life and the source of all that we have. Today we give back to you our tithes and our offerings. We thank you for those that have been sent in via mail and online. And we ask that you give us wisdom and guidance to use these funds judiciously, and yet extravagantly to help build your kingdom. Oh God, we again thank you for all that you do for us. And we ask that these offerings be used to spread your love and your salvation to all. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Precious Lord, Take My Hand. For those joining us online, the words will be in the comments below so that you can sing along with us this morning. 
We know that Jesus does have our hand. Even we can't touch each other's hand. Jesus has our hand um, and is guiding us through this time. you do.